Welcome back to the channel and my continuing series focusing on the history of science fiction film from its humble beginnings in the early 1900s to the groundbreaking developments of the silent era. I'll uncover the stories behind the visionary filmmakers who dared to push the boundaries of the imagination. The early 1900s were marked by profound changes in society, politics, and technology. The aftermath of World War I left the world in a state of uncertainty, seeking solace in entertainment and escapism. Cinema, a relatively new medium, rapidly gained popularity as a form of mass entertainment. It was during this era that the seeds of science fiction cinema were sown, taking root in the minds of pioneering filmmakers. The years from 1916 to 1919 marked a turning point for science fiction cinema. Filmmakers around the globe began to embrace the genre's potential and visionary directors stepped forward to craft groundbreaking works that would forever shape the landscape of cinematic storytelling. It was during this time that audiences were introduced to the earliest glimpses of underwater adventures, journeys to Mars, psychological explorations, and poignant social commentaries through the lens of science fiction. The silent era coincided with significant technological advancements in filmmaking. At the turn of the 20th century, cameras and film stocks improved, enabling filmmakers to shoot longer and more elaborate sequences. This advancement allowed for the development of more complex narratives and visual storytelling. Additionally, film techniques evolved, allowing for smoother transitions between scenes and facilitating the creation of more sophisticated storytelling structures. Filmmakers began to experiment with techniques such as cross-cutting and parallel editing, which heightened dramatic tension and enriched the cinematic experience. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is a 1916 adaptation of Jules Verne's classic novel and was directed by Stuart Patton. We discussed the first version of Byrne's story in episode one, and a lot has already changed in the 10 years in regards to cinematography, editing, and film stock. This is the first film to take cinematography underwater. Notably, the film featured spectacular underwater sequences that astonished audiences of the time. Using diving suits and submerged sets, Patton and his team achieved stunning visual effects, effectively immersing viewers into the captivating world of the sea. These groundbreaking scenes laid the groundwork for future filmmakers to explore the potential of underwater cinematography. Its influence on subsequent generations of filmmakers is evident in works such as The Abyss from 1989, Sphere from 1998, and James Cameron's recent blockbuster, Avatar The Way of Water from 2022. I thought this would have been fascinating to see in theaters in 1916, but Captain Nemo's makeup is something that would be over the top today. The story is meandering and the main draw is the visual effects and not the actual story. The End of the World from 1916 is a Danish silent film directed by August Bloom, and it delves into the captivating futuristic scenario where an impending comet poses a grave threat to Earth. Set against the backdrop of societal anxieties prevalent during the First World War in Europe, the film weaves a compelling tale of impending doom and human resilience. Haley's Comet was also on audiences' mind since it passed by Earth in 1910. Amidst the chaos and uncertainty, the film follows the lives of several characters whose destinies intertwine as they grapple with their mortality and search for hope in the faith of impending disaster. The film showcases the technical capabilities of silent cinema, using impressive visual effects for its time to depict the comet's impending approach and the ensuing chaos. As one of the early cinematic depictions of a catastrophic scenario, the film offers a compelling and thought-provoking narrative that continues to captivate audiences. I love a good disaster film and was pleasantly surprised to see something in this sci-fi subgenre so early. But it was a bit slow and wasted a lot of time until the last act, which is the best part of the film in dealing with the destruction of humanity and the aftermath. 
But then again, many disaster films of today do the exact same thing, so I guess the formula hasn't changed that much. Homunculus, from 1916 to 1917, was directed by Otto Rippert, is a six-chapter serial loosely based on an epic poem by Robert Hammerling from 1888 that follows the ambitious and controversial experiment of creating an artificial man known as Humunculus. As Humunculus begins to develop human-like intelligence and emotions, the film delves into thought-provoking themes of artificial intelligence and human ethics. He has little capacity for love, even when presented with the good in humanity. The narrative of how Humunculus explores the ethical implications of playing God by creating an artificial being delves into the complexity of human relationship with artificial intelligence. The idea of creating new life and the ethical implications is a common theme in the first two decades of the 20th century in films such as Al Yurani, Der Gollum, and Frankenstein. On an interesting side note, director Fritz Lang, who would go on to fame as the director of Metropolis in 1927, worked as an assistant on this serial. Humunculus was very popular at the time, and in the years after, the six chapters were heavily edited, but have been restored in the last few years. In 1918, science fiction filmmaking was still in its early stages, but showed promising signs of growth and experimentation. While the impact of World War I influenced many aspects of filmmaking, the science fiction genre began to explore imaginative narratives and futuristic concepts on screen. While the focus was often on adventure and fantasy elements, these early films laid the groundwork for more complex and technologically advanced science fiction films that would emerge in subsequent decades. The Moskabit, also known in English as A Trip to Mars, is a Danish silent fiction film released in 1918, directed by Holger Madsen. The film is considered one of the earliest cinematic endeavors to depict space travel and an extraterrestrial world. The story revolves around a group of adventurous explorers who embark on a daring expedition to Mars. Using a groundbreaking spacecraft, they set off on a thrilling journey through space, encountering Martian landscapes and peculiar creatures that look particularly human. A trip to Mars remains significant for its pioneering portrayal of interstellar exploration, futuristic technology, and alien civilizations setting the stage for future space-themed science fiction films. For its time, it featured remarkable special effects that astonished audiences. Practical effects, optical illusions, and ingenious set designs allowed Madsen to create the illusion of space travel and interstellar vistas. Its legacy endures, reminding us of the boundless possibilities of the human imagination and our unyielding quest to explore unknown frontiers of the universe. This was my favorite of the films discussed in this episode. Though not a scientifically accurate portrayal of space travel that we know of today, the cinematography, set design, and visual effects showed a jump in sophistication in science fiction films in this decade. Al Rone, from 1918, was directed by Eugene Alaise and Michael Curtiz. Curtiz would later direct Casablanca. Unfortunately, little is known about the film and is considered lost. We do know that it was based on a novel by the same name by Hans Heise Jurs and is a variation of a Hungarian legend of Elrone. The film explores the themes of artificial creation, human behavior, and the influence of genetics. The story revolves around the creation of a young woman named Elrone using the semen of a hanged murderer and the subsequent impact of her mysterious origins on those around her. The story would be remade several times, for the first time in 1928, and then in 1930 and 1952. The Master Mystery is a silent film serial released in 1918 and is a captivating blend of mystery, adventure, and early science fiction. Starring the renowned escaped artist Harry Houdini, this serial follows a government agent as he investigates a criminal organization 
known as the Black Cabinet. This group employs advanced technology and cunning traps to execute their plans. The serial is comprised of 15 chapters, each offering a mix of action, suspense, and innovative concepts for its time. The Master Mystery stands out as an early example of science fiction cinema, as it features elements like a robot and a death ray, which were rare in films of this era. While the Master Mystery may not be as well known as some of Houdini's other works, it remains an intriguing piece of cinematic history. Its combination of crime solving, adventure, and science fiction elements all intertwined with Houdini's extraordinary abilities and contributes to its significance in the evolution of early genre filmmaking. Finally, some robots, a staple of later science fiction, as well as an action, adventure, and even some patent law. It's a shame that the series is not in its full condition and portions seem to be missing. After the end of World War I, science fiction filmmaking entered a new phase characterized by innovation, technology, and the growing appetite for more imaginative narratives. The war had disrupted film in Europe, but its conclusion saw a resurgence in creative energies. The First Men in the Moon is a silent film released in 1919, directed by Bruce Gordon and J.L.V. Lee. Unfortunately, this film is considered lost. In 2010, the British Film Institute listed The First Men in the Moon as one of its 75 most wanted lost films. The First Men in the Moon is an adaptation of H.G. Wells' classic science fiction novel of the same name. The novel's plot can give us a hint of what the film was about. The First Men in the Moon, as it tells the story of two adventurers who embarked on a journey to the moon using an anti-gravity substance invented by one of the adventurers. Upon reaching the moon, they discover a subterranean world inhabited by the intelligent insect-like selenites. The novel explores themes of exploration, imperialism, and the clash of cultures while also delving into the possibilities and challenges of human expansion into outer space. Although the film is lost to history, its legacy lives on through the enduring influence of H.G. Wells' original story and its contribution to the development of science fiction and cinema. As soon as filmmakers began to explore science fiction as a visual medium, they adapted previously published novels, plays, and stories. And so with this episode, I thought we'd begin to discuss a few science fiction works published in this time period, some of which would inspire future cinematic adaptations. In 1917, Edgar Rice Burroughs published the hardcover edition of A Princess of Mars, a captivating tale of adventure and romance set on the Red Planet. It was first serialized in the pulp magazine All Story Magazine from February to July 1912. The story follows John Carter, a Confederate veteran, who finds himself transported to the Red Planet and embarks on a series of daring escapades. Its influence was so profound that it would later serve as the inspiration for various adaptations, bringing the Martian world to life on the big screen. In 2012, the story was given the feature film treatment with the release of John Carter, a critical and commercial failure at the time, but has since gained a cult following. Continuing the trend of Burroughs' literary creations, The Land That Time Forgot emerged in 1918 as a thrilling adventure published in the Blue Book magazine, and then finally as a novel in 1924. Set during World War I, the story unfolds as a submarine crew discovers a hidden prehistoric land in the heart of Antarctica. Inhabited by ancient creatures and rival human factions, this lost world becomes a stage for survival and exploration. Filmmakers eventually adapted the original story in 1974 and sequels in 1976 and 1977. Another adaptation was also released in 2009. The Heads of Cerberus, written by Gertrude Burroughs Bennett, under the pen name Francis Stevens, was published in 1919 in serial form for the magazine The Thrill Book and as a novel in 1952. It introduced readers to a time travel narrative 
steeped in dystopian intrigue. The story revolves around three individuals from 1919 who find themselves transported to a grim future version of Philadelphia. Although it's never been directly adapted into a movie, the novel's exploration of time travel and the consequences laid the groundwork for the future cinematic explorations of time-bending narratives. When looking at history, it is important to understand what else was going on in the world, so let's look at some historical and cultural events that occurred between 1916 and and 1919. First off, the significant cultural events of this period that left a lasting impact on society. These cultural and literary events reflect a dynamic and transformative period in the arts, witnessing the emergence of new artistic movements and the contributions of influential writers and artists who left a lasting impression in their respective fields. The Dada Movement, 1916. The Dada movement, which emerged in Zurich, Switzerland, was a response to the horrors of World War I. It rejected conventional artistic norms and embraced anti-art, irrationality, and absurdity as a way to protest against the prevailing social and political order. Publication of James Joyce's A Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man, 1916. Joyce's groundbreaking novel, Exploring the Development of an Artist's Consciousness, was published, further establishing him as one of the most influential modernist writers. Da Stijl, 1917 Founded in the Netherlands, Da Stijl was an influential art movement characterized by its use of its shapes, primary colors, and a focus on abstraction and simplicity. Formation of the Bauhaus School, 1919 The Bauhaus, a German art school founded by Walter Gropius, sought to combine fine arts with crafts and technology, emphasizing functional design and the integration of art into daily life. Next, some historical events of this period that shaped society. World War I, 1914-1918 This devastating global conflict continued throughout the years until 1918, leading to millions of deaths and reshaping the political landscape of Europe and beyond. I will cover World War I and its effects on filmmakers in a special episode next week. The Russian Revolution, 1917 In March 1917, the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II led to the fall of the Russian monarchy and the establishment of a provincial government. In October 1917, the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, seized power leading to the creation of the Soviet Union. Balfour Declaration, 1917 In a letter from Arthur Balfour, the British government expressed support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, laying the foundation for the future developments in the region. The Spanish flu pandemic, 1918-1919 One of the deadliest pandemics in history, The Spanish flu infected millions of people worldwide and caused millions of deaths, adding to the devastation of World War I. Women's Suffrage During this period, several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany, granted women the right to vote or expanded suffrage rights. From 1916 to 1919, there were several significant scientific and technological events that advanced various fields of knowledge and paved the way for future discoveries. First Nonstop Transatlantic Flight, 1919 Alcock and Brown made the first nonstop transatlantic flight in June 1919, traveling from Newfoundland, Canada to Ireland in a Vickers Vimy aircraft. Early Radio Broadcasting, 1919 The first radio broadcasting stations in the United States, 8MK, later WWJ, and 9XM began regular broadcasting news and entertainment in Detroit and Wisconsin, respectively. Let's take a detour to explore the broader landscape of filmmaking. While our focus is primarily on science fiction films, it is important to look at the wider context in which these films were produced. 
and the diverse range of cinematic works being created at this time. From 1916 to 1919, the film industry witnessed several significant events and developments that shaped the course of cinema history. Some of the notable film events during this period include German Expressionism, the German film industry, particularly during and after World War I, saw the emergence of a new form of expression. Films in the 1920s, such as The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Nosferatu, would become iconic examples of this influential artistic movement. Establishment of Film Censorship As film gained popularity, concerns about their potential impact on society grew. Several countries, including the United States and the United Kingdom, established film censorship boards to regulate and control the content shown in theaters. Now let's take a look at some of the influential films released from 1916 to 1919. Intolerance, 1916. Directed by D.W. Griffith, Intolerance is a groundbreaking silent epic that interweaves four distinct stories spanning different historical eras, exploring themes of love, intolerance, and social injustice. The film's ambitious scale and narrative complexity made it a landmark in cinema history. Cleopatra, 1917. The 1917 film Cleopatra is a silent historical drama directed by J. Gordon Edwards, starring Theta Bera in the leading role. The film depicts the tumultuous life of Cleopatra, the legendary queen of Egypt. The film focuses on Cleopatra's romantic entanglements with Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony, as well as her political maneuvers in the context of ancient Egypt's power struggles. Tarzan of the Apes, 1918. Tarzan of the Apes, released in 1918, and directed by Scott Sidney is a silent film adaptation of Edgar Rice Burroughs' novel. The film follows the story of Tarzan, a man raised by apes in the African jungle after his parents' deaths. As Tarzan grows, he encounters other humans and grapples with his identity and his place in the world, ultimately finding love and facing challenges in his quest for belonging and survival. Different from the Others, 1919 Directed by Richard Oswald, this German film was a pioneering work addressing LGBTQ themes in cinema. It tackled social issues and censorship challenges, making it a landmark in early exploration of LGBTQ representation in film. The film spanning the years from 1916 to 1919 collectively impacted science fiction cinema by introducing innovative visual storytelling techniques. These films not only captivated audiences of their time, but also served as an inspiration for generations of filmmakers to come. From 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea to The First Men in the Moon, each film left an indelible mark on the genre. As a result, science fiction cinema gained credibility as a legitimate genre capable of exploring complex themes and profound philosophical questions. There are still many captivating chapters to explore in the history of science fiction film. Join me in upcoming episodes as I dive deeper into the subsequent decades, uncovering more milestones, influential filmmakers, and iconic films that continue to shape the science fiction genre. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe for future videos about the history of science fiction cinema. It would mean so much if you would join me on this journey. If you would like to see more in-depth analysis of any films mentioned today, please mention it in the comments section below.